How to Use the Project Board. In PBIS, students engage in many different activities, incrementally building understanding and applying what they are learning. This requires keeping track of the unit's big question or challenge, keeping track of the smaller questions being addressed in each learning set, keeping track of the reasons why they are doing each activity, the results of their investigations, and their understanding of the science content. This is the kind of complexity people constantly manage in the real world in many different professions. It is not what children are used to managing in school. PBIS integrates various tools to help learners organize their thinking so they can successfully engage in these complex activities. Pull out your lab book and we're going to update your project board. The project board is one of those tools. The class creates a project board at the beginning of each unit and continuously adds to its five columns over the course of the unit. Creating and updating the project board is a repeated social practice in PBIS. The project board becomes an important class artifact. It is used to record the progress of the students as they move through the unit. On it, students keep records of what they think they know, what they need to learn, what they are learning, their evidence, and the implications of what they are learning. They revisit and revise what is in the columns many times during the unit. The first question is, what do we think we know? The very first thing that we want to put on the project board are your ideas about what do you think you know about that question. How does water quality affect the ecology of a community? When the class creates the project board at the beginning of each unit, the students record what they think they already know to address the unit's big challenge. What do you think you know? This is what we need to do first. At your table, I want you to write three things that you think you know as a group, three things you think you know about this question. How does water quality affect the ecology of a community? This is recorded in the first column. This activity elicits the students' prior understandings. Current research in cognitive science has shown that this is a necessary part of the learning process. Give us one thing of what do you think you know? Um, the lower the water quality, the lower the standard of living will be. This table says the lower the water quality, uh, the lower the standard of living. All right, how about you guys? What's one of the things that you would like to put under um, what do we think we know? What the students record may not be correct or complete. However, it provides them with the opportunity to later compare what they thought they knew to what they have learned. This component is integral to building new understanding. You all put a bunch of ideas on here about what do you think you know. But I got to tell you, it could be that some of these ideas are correct and some of these ideas are incorrect. And when scientists have ideas that they think they know and then they want to find out if those ideas are pretty accurate or if those ideas are totally crazy wrong, then they do some investigations. What are some things that we would need to investigate to test out whether these things we think we know are accurate or not accurate? In the second column, students record what they think they need to investigate to help them address the big challenge. In order to direct their investigations, they create questions from their small group and whole class discussions. What I would like you to do is try to go back and say what you just said, but can you say it in the form of a question? Because the things we want to investigate are really kind of like questions we want to answer. During these discussions, listen for students' reasoning behind their ideas. The water is dirty, uh, people wouldn't want to live in the city and encourage them to provide their reasons. You keep talking about water being dirty. So if the water is dirty, do you don't want to live there. If the water is dirty, it costs a lot of money. If the water is dirty, it affects your health. Da, 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 da. Water is dirty. What does that mean for water to be dirty? Do you think you know that if water is clear, it's, it's clean and you can drink it and you can swim in it and you could eat fish out of it and all that stuff. No. Or are there other things that you would need to know about the water 
to know whether clear water was good, high quality water. Students will disagree about some of the items in the first column. These are indicators of questions that need to go into the second column. As they move through the unit, they will revise the project board, adding more specific questions. In this second column, it is important that the teacher guides the students to anticipate the questions that they will need to answer in the upcoming learning set. Using the project board in this way will help students feel they are moving through the unit at their own pace and on their own terms, investigating science content that they have identified as important for addressing the unit's challenge. At this point, do not expect students to be experts at the project board. They will be using the project board over the entire unit and all PBIS units and will understand its purpose and process better as they gain more experience with it. In the third column, students record what they are learning. This helps them keep track of their progress. Also, recording on the project board indirectly promotes momentum. Working together to summarize and articulate what they have been learning provides a way of engaging students. The fourth column, or the evidence column, is designed to help students continually keep in mind that science is an endeavor in which conclusions are built on evidence. There must always be evidence in the evidence column to support what they have learned. During the course of a PBIS unit, it is conceivable that students could easily lose track of why they are engaging in specific activities. So we started with what we thought we knew. We made a list of things that we wanted to look into. And then we, today we talked about what are we learning and what our evidence is. And now we're going to move into this final column. So what does that mean in the context of the big challenge? In the last column of the project board, students record the implications of what they have learned. They reflect on ways to apply what they have learned to address the unit's big question. The class updates the project board after the first section of each learning set and at the end of each learning set. Each time that the class updates the project board is an opportunity to review how far students have come to understanding the science that will help them address the big challenge. This process helps students identify what else they still need to learn. Can anybody tell me what they put in their what are we learning column? Reflection as a class on how the project board has evolved over time is a way to help students recognize their learning. I'm trying to answer that question. Yes. Water goes from high to low. Water goes from high to low. Do we have a buzzword we can put in there? High elevation, elevation to low. Teachers elevation. should be on the lookout for major changes in students' capabilities and understandings. Stream tables show how um, they can make deposition and erosion, and it can carry dirt down to the bottom. Great, so now we're talking about deposition and erosion, which I know all of you know a lot about. And when noticed, teachers can initiate discussion around the project board that allows students to recognize how far they have come. Okay, so the controls were that they were in the same spot, same place, same plants, same. They were watered and measured at the same time. The project board also offers an opportunity for the teacher and the students to think about their formative assessment. The project board and having the students' ideas recorded and displayed shows students what they're learning and it gives the teacher an insight into whether the students have learned the content for that section, for the learning set, and they're ready to move on to the next learning set.